Amen. God, to God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. So look at the lives that that has touched. A couple of people had a vision and had a dream and decided, on, let's do something to keep somebody busy. And the Lord, I'll tell you what, he's done a lot in my life. Amen. Golly. He has done a whole lot these last year or so. And this poor fellow back here, he said, what Bible verses are you going to use? And I said, well, this is what I wrote down up here in... Uh, I said, I, I was in my shop, and uh, they laugh at me. Sometimes I'll be working on that truck, and I'll get an idea or something, so I'll rip the, the top off a cardboard box and start writing a lesson down. Well, this time we're on a piece of paper, so we're doing pretty good. Second Chronicles 16. How many of you got your Bibles, your iPads, your iPhones? Wave them around, make Jesus glad, make the devil mad. Do you carry it around? Do you even look at it? Or is your Bible a doorstop? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move you around. I'm going to challenge you today. Uh, you're going to get something to eat, but I'm going to do my best to feed you too because, you know, I, I love all of you and like most of you. That's what my kids and all would tell me sometimes. Dad, we love you, but we don't like you sometimes. That's okay. But I want you to know about Jesus, okay? I, I want you to know about Jesus. There is coming a day, whether you want to believe it or not, but there's coming a day when all this is going to be over with and we're going to be in a different place. That's right. Woo, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. You cannot learn to live until you've accepted how to die. Anybody with me? And you say, what are you talking about? If you don't know where you're going, then you're going to live in fear. I see so many people still living in fear today. Not as many down here in Texas as I do in New Mexico. We have a very well-trained, uh, what do you call it, honey, a bunch of uh, uh, pub. No, they're not even rednecks. They are they're people, that, uh, I don't know. We see them driving around. I mean, we live out in the middle of nowhere. It's an hour and a half to the biggest town we got, like for Walmart or a gas station or something like that, along there with it. And you'll see him riding down the road with a mask on. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> Safety first. But you know, the Lord gave us the ability to bind that stuff up. Amen? Yes. He did. And I'm going to get around to that too along with it. But to lead off with, 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9 says this. Everybody there that wants to be there? Look at there. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole land searching for somebody that wants to do what? Whose heart is perfect toward Him. That word perfect right there means somebody that lives every day, every minute of their life seeking the Lord or acknowledging the Lord. Got another look good story. Whenever I decided in my ignorance to turn my back on the Lord, as some of y'all know around here, and got locked up in jail, I decided and I told the Lord that I'd been through a series of some different things happening over a while, and the Lord, there was a bunch of smoke and mirrors, okay? I said, I don't believe in this. I played this game from 2000 until 2017, okay? In 2017, we had a drilling company, had two drilling rigs paid off, I have one almost paid off, and we're running and rolling and going. Through a series of events, rig burning, getting in trouble with the insurance company, saying, oh, no, we, you're paying insurance on the truck. You weren't paying insurance on the drilling rig. And I came across a desk. Anybody like Matt Dillon? I love Matt Dillon. Clobber him. If you can't clobber him, shoot him. No. You say, man, you can't be saying that. But throughout that series of events, I turned my back on the Lord. In February of that year, we were a very solvent company. In September of that year, October, yeah, October, I was trying to borrow money from my mother's other son so I could get a motel room and lay up with some old gal. That's how quick the Lord will pull it away from you if your heart is not perfect towards Him, if you don't acknowledge Him in all that you do. And you say, well, that's pretty stiff. I'm talking about it's life or death, people. Right. Which way are you going to go? 
There ain't no, well, you know, how many of you are Christian just because you go to church? That don't make you a Christian. You've got to believe in Jesus Christ. You've got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he is Lord. Amen? You've got to do it. I don't care how many times you think it in your life. If you never say that you are my Lord and I proclaim you to the highest of anybody that's sitting and listen, that's not it. You can help out with everything that the church has going on. You can do everything good. You can all your goods outweigh your bads and you still won't get into heaven. Okay? Does everybody be straight on that? Anybody mixed up? There will be a test afterwards, Madison. Wake up. No. Second Chronicles. Whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein I have done foolishly, and I turned away from him. And man, he took that stuff away. You will notice that if you belong to the Lord and you're not following the Lord and working for Him, He'll put up with you for a little while and then He's going to chastise you. The Bible tells us that. Okay? Yes. You're not going to be able to get away with all the things that you used to get away with all the time. What about our kids? You know, when they start out little and go along, we let them slide on some things. Some of them, when they get a little bigger, we still let them slide a little. She's going to get me, but that's okay. I can still take her. Staying with the Lord. How strong is your want to? How strong is your want to? To follow Jesus. Anybody? Not strong enough. Why not? It's our own fault. But you know what? If we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just and He will forgive us all our sins. And he will restore us. And we're righteous. Have I sinned? Yeah. I did this morning. I ran 85 miles an hour trying to get over here. Is that a sin? Yeah, it's breaking the law. Lord, forgive me. I got to get here because I don't want to give. I was really going to mess with Robert, but he never did call me. I thought, boy, when he does, I'm going to like, I thought it was next weekend. But I slipped up and I told Danny. So when you tell Danny, everybody knows. <laughs> He's faithful and just, Danny. He restores us. Me and you both. Restored. The old is gone. The new is here. Woo, I love that. I love that. So how strong is your want to? Is it strong enough to learn the promises of the Bible that pertain to you? You say, now what are you talking about? Do you have a, does anybody have a promise in the Bible that they cling to? Mine's 1 Peter chapter 9, I mean uh, chapter 5 and verse 9. It says, after you've suffered for a little while, he himself who has called you heavenward in Christ Jesus will restore you and cause you to be steadfast, firm, and strong. And for an old man, that's good words. Isn't it, Bill Mungham? Steadfast, firm, and strong. We're ready to go. We're ready to fight the battle. So have you learned any promises that you stand on? Well, I didn't know I had to. Katie, I'm going to pick on you some more. Because I love you. We speak things, don't we? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? Isaiah 54, 17. Let's put that one up there. He's ahead of me. No weapon that's formed against me shall do what? Does that mean it will be not be formed? No. That means it's going to come against you. What came against you this morning? Did anything? Did everybody have an easy ride, easy time getting up and getting here, getting kids ready? Is that not a weapon that Satan raised up to hold you back? Did you bind it up when you prayed this morning? Okay, marriage seminar time. <laughs> How many of you in here that are married hold your wife or your husband's hand and pray together at least once a day? Anybody? Y'all have? Y'all have? Have you seen benefits in it? 
Do you see benefits in it? Do we see benefits in it? Yes, we do. All right, guys, you want to make your wife happy? Hold your hold her hand and pray with her. Do you lift up your children? Do you lift up your grandchildren? And do you speak protection and blessings over them each and every day? Do you speak blessings over yourself? Well, I didn't know I had to do all that. No weapon that's formed against me is going to prosper. The devil goes about what? As a roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And you say, well, I tell you what, I leave that dude alone. I don't mention him. I don't talk about him. And he leaves me alone. You are dead wrong, brother. He has your name. He's got your wife's name. He's got your kids' names, your grandkids' names. And he is waiting for the right minute to devour them. I am here to testify and be a witness to that. What did I do? I turned my back on God. I said, my good looks, physique, and charm, and my skill and talents are what's made this money. He said, I'm going to show you who made this money. And in seven months, eight months, I was sitting over in the Falls County Jail. Three charges, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Got a bad temper. Whoo, bad temper. He said, I'm going to show you, brother, who's in charge of all this ride. It ain't you. And I'm going to bring you around. And I'll keep turning up the heat until you do come around. So it was quite a while. Out of a, a miracle, a flat miracle, a lot of people praying. Nancy was one of them. They talked to Judge and him into letting me go down to there to the House of Hope in Madisonville. They said, they were, I was looking at 10 years for aggravated assault. And my mouth and my ignorance that I did in the courtroom between Judge Stem and Jody. And just being yaya, being dumb, got to go to the House of Hope down in Madisonville. Said we're going to send you down there for a year. We're going to bring you back after a year, and we're going to see how you are, and then we'll go from there. You may still go down and do your ten years, and there it was. It was not looking good, but you know me. I was like, mm, I do what I want to do. Lord started working. Lord started working. It came around, I was in there in November, it came around to April. Easter was on April the 1st in 2018. Brad had told Callie and him, said, y'all come over there and say bye to your daddy. Said, we can't do anything with him. He's so dang hard-headed. I hated Brad Brock. Boy, I'm going to tell you what, we butted heads. Woo! I love him to death now. Tommy Parker's down there, Bill. Tommy is a vice president down there at the House of Hope in Madisonville. And uh, we butted his, man, he told Callie, he said, y'all come down here and say goodbye to your daddy because we're sending him back to the county so they can send him on. We can't, he won't come around, he won't do anything. He's just a hammerhead. So Wednesday of that week, they had a prophet that came from Colorado, came down there and was teaching. They, and they made me go in the kitchen, work in the kitchen. Never worked inside my li entire life. And here I was having to cook in the kitchen. Now, I like to cook, but not every day for 75 men fixing three meals. Mm-mm. Boy, I hate it. Woo! So we went in there to listen to that prophet. No weapon formed against me. He's going to prosper. That old devil is working, man. That prophet, he said, I see this place as a train station. He said, one way leads to life, and the other way leads to death, and it is your choice on which one you go. That made me mad. I can make that choice anytime I want to. I'm in charge here. Lord shaking his head. Boy, I got in trouble because I, I told him. When he said that, I stood up and I said, You're, that's a bunch of bull. I don't have to make a choice right now. And we know you need to. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. I got in big time trouble, stirring up dissent, discord. They didn't put up with that. That was part of the reason they was kicking me out. So Ms. Weber is this old black lady. I love her to death. She's a very, very spiritual lady. I still talk to her a lot. So they had me down there were cleaning my plow, boy, about it all. And, and they said, we know what's the matter with you. said, you lost your joy. And I'm like, well, duh. <laughs> boy, it took three of y'all to figure that out. 
said, you've lost your joy. And I said, yeah, no joke. And I really don't care whether I get it back. And I said, I'll tell you what, I prayed this to the Lord. I said, you either kill me or heal me because somebody's got to have some relief. My kids, my, me, everybody. I'm nothing but just a pain in the butt. That's all I am. Thursday, they confined me to my room in there. Thursday come around, I woke up, and I thought, and, and I didn't smile at all. I smile all the time. I, I, wouldn't, I couldn't crack a smile before that, and, and I woke up, and I was in there, and I was looking, and I was like, what in the world are you dreaming about? Friday, it was a little stronger. Saturday, they were looking at me like, what in the world's going on with you? We ain't never seen you smile before. I don't know. And Ms. Weber, she said, ooh, John, Lord done got a hold of you. No, ma'am, not yet. I'm still in control. Mm-mm. You know how she went around there. So Sunday, Callie and them didn't know anything about what was going on. So we had Easter service, and they had picnic, didn't we, Scoot? And we were all over there. And she looked at me, and she said, Daddy, are you okay? Yeah, man, I'm fine. You sure you hadn't gone and gotten anything anywhere? You're not taking any dope? You hadn't done anything? You hadn't went and got nothing? Nowhere? You really? You're all right? I said, yeah, I'm fine. She'd look at me and look back. You're sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm all right. So they left. <clears throat> Crystal and I had just kind of, we've known, Crystal has been a part of our life when we moved to Mexico. She drove the school bus out there and hauled. Amanda and Katie Rose when they were little, this family friend all the time, and just fit right in there. And the girls love her as much as they love their mother. And they, Crystal was a part of the divorce and all that stuff. She saw a lot of that, comforted those kids and helped them along. So she had been writing me letters of encouragement, as y'all had, sending me cards, trying to encourage me along. And we have a friend out there that killed his grandson in a skid steer accident. The little boy, they were dumping some hay, and he was looking out, and the Jackie lowered it down on him and, and killed him. So she wrote me in this letter, and it took about a week for mail to get back and forth, and she said, how do I comfort Jackie and Sissy with the death of that child? And I'm sitting in there in my bunk, writing on that deal, and still not really know what all was going on, but writing in there on my bunk, and, and wrote her this letter, and I said, the thing that you've got to remember when the Lord has us going through a trial and a temptation or a trial and a tribulation, that He's not trying to destroy us, but He has got to burn away all that bad to get down to what's good's left to come back up of it. Amen? The Lord is never trying to destroy you. How many of you are going through a trial or a tribulation right now? Take hope. He's not trying to destroy us. He wants us to look to Him all the more. All the more. I don't care what the symptoms are. I don't care how you feel. We deny that. We're not denying those symptoms, but I'm denying the right for it to operate in your body. Call those things, be they not, as though they are. You are healed in Jesus' name. I don't even know what's the matter with you. Do you do that? Well, I didn't know them verses were in the Bible. Yes. You see, that's where I went back to that. You've got to know those promises, people. You've got to. So I wrote in that, that letter to her, to be sure and tell Jackie and Sissy this, to hang strong, to be strong, to do this. And the light come on just like I was sitting underneath a 200-watt light bulb. And it was like, dummy, what do you think I'm trying to do to you? I want you to straighten up and to see that all these things that you had or don't have is because of me and from me. Why should I bless you if you're not going to give me glory on where it came from? Why am I going to heal you if you're not going to give me the glory of where the healing comes from? Right. Amen? It's that simple. I stand here today before you to show you what God can do to a life that got all screwed up. He will restore you. Amen, Danny. Yes. Amen. Yes. Woo! I'm living proof, brother. This guy is real. Makes me want to jump and shout. Woo! I don't want to embarrass my youngest daughter. But I love you, honey. 
My kids, they say, oh, man, why do you pick on us all the time? I just love you. You know who I am. You see my faults, and you know where I'm at. But I'm going to tell you what. I want you to see Christ Jesus working in me, the hope of glory. I want you to see him. I want all of y'all to see that. This little one. Harper Joe goes with me all the time back there, Tyler's little girl. She, she stays out there, and we keep her a lot. And I got a truck, and I haul a few cows, haul a little gravel and feed, got a blade, and grade some roads, and do just we do a little bit of everything, you know, out there. And uh, Harper goes with me a lot. So we pulled up at the sale barn one day, and it was on sale day. And, I mean, you know, they park like team ropers. They just pull up there and park. I'm here, here style. So I was easing around trying to get up to the chute, and I kind of thought I, they'd left a trail up through there where I'd get to the chute and unload. We got wormed all the way up in those cars, and there was one old guy I had parked. I mean, there was just right dead in the middle. If he'd have got to one side, I could have got by him. And before I knew it, boy, I let it go. This son of a gun. Oh, Granny, we don't like him, do we? <laughs> Thought you were asleep back there. We don't like that guy, do we? I said, this guy could at least park one side or the other. So we backed on back out of there, you know, and went on. We got unloaded. Well, the next week I came in there and Crystal was with me. So we drove pulling in the parking lot. She goes, Noni, I hope that guy in there that we don't like. <laughs> Watch what you say. Watch what you're teaching. Are you teaching Jesus to all these little ones we got running around in here? Amen? Amen. Are you? Husbands, are you loving your wives? Are you loving your wives the way you want somebody to love your daughter? Wives, are you loving your husbands the way you want some son to take care of? See, vice versa. See how it works? What are you modeling in your life? That's what it is. It's about sharing Jesus. Every single one of y'all are preachers. Some of them duck back and don't run off. No. Every one of us is a preacher. By our actions, by our business dealings, and all that we do. Amen? Do you ever think about that? No, that's Robert's job. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? Hey, that's me. Is that you? Are you a new creature? Are you the same old grump you were the day before? You know me? I like being new every day. It's just fun to see what the Lord's going to put in store. Do you ever run into different changes and problems while you're out on the road? All the time. How did we used to deal with it? Get mad, throw a fit? Yeah, of the flesh. But see there? Therefore, if any man's in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. That's good news for us. Golly, I like that. But do you really believe it? Okay, I'm going to tell a joke. Y'all better wake up. No, my wife's shaking her head. No. I want you to see, folks, that this church deal is not just about coming up here and warming up a chair. I don't. I want you to see it as an everyday activity. It's a life. It's a lifestyle. It's a way. That's what being in the kingdom of heaven is about. It is a way of doing things. Business dealings, home dealings, family dealings. How many of you belong to the kingdom of God? How many want to belong? Woo! We're going to give a free bathtub in here in a minute. Do you really believe that God can fix your problem? Do you? Do you? That's like laying on hands and healing people. And they say, well, what if you lay hands on them and they don't get healed? What if I lay hands on them and they do get healed? Amen. Amen. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask according to the power that works inside of us. Inside of us. One of our daughters is into this weightlifting all the time. 
And I laugh at Cody. I tell her, you can't pick up a five-pound sack of flour. Tease her all the time. She exercises. She works. She teaches school. She's all the time doing some fitness, hiking, doing all this kind of stuff, you know. If she didn't do that, would she have the endurance? I mean, she goes on some hikes. She travels by herself. If you don't exercise God in your life, how are you going to withstand the devil? If you're not speaking these promises that you've got. Let me jump to this. What is Easter about? What, what is Easter about? What is it, honey? He rose from the dead, didn't he? Do you know why he rose from the dead? Okay. We know that he died, right? Okay. Jesus died and he went into hell. And when he went down there, there was a guy down there by the name of Satan, right? Have you been told that? The devil. Okay, he was down there. A long, long time ago before Jesus ever died, there was a man named Adam and a girl named Eve. First two people that God created. Have you heard that story? Okay. Well, when Adam come down here and he was on the earth, God gave him all the power and authority. Just like a policeman has a power and authority, you know. Well, God gave Adam all that power right there. Okay? And when he gave him that power, that old devil eased in there and he tricked Adam. And Adam gave him the crown of life. Did y'all know that? Adam gave over that power and authority when that snake came by. Instead of speaking the promises and taking that power back, what did he do? Blamed it on that danged old woman. <laughs> Wasn't her fault. Men, you got to grow up and be men. Got to grow up and be men. I'm not joking. We wonder why our society is in the shape that it's in now. It's because us men have laid down, because we don't want to do it, we're going to let somebody else do it. And the women have done the best that they could with what they had to work with, but there was no authority. Okay. We've lost the power. Adam gave it up, right? Jesus went down in there, kicked the devil's tail, took the crown back. That power and authority is now back in him. Did Jesus have to do that to prove he was all-powerful and have the authority? No. He always has had it. He always had it. He healed people. That's why we see the miracles. He's healed people. He stood in front of Lazarus' tomb, and he said, Lazarus, come out. Stood before death and Lazarus came out. If he hadn't called his name, everybody would have got up and come out. Okay? But the reason that he went down there, honey, and he did all that right there is so that you and I will have that power and authority. Did you know that? Woo! That's right. He got it. We have it. So if you have that power and you have that authority, why aren't you binding up Satan in your life? Why aren't you? Because your want to is not great enough. You see, it goes right back to that. I want you to live victorious. I want you to know what Easter's about. As, as far as the devil's concerned, we went down there with Jesus and kicked his tail. But what does the devil, what does the world tell you? You're not good enough. You won't never be good enough. You're always going to be broke. You're always going to be a dope head. You're always going to be a loser. You're always going to fall back into that old trap. You're always going to go back to watching that mess on your phone. Has he ever told you that? Yeah. I don't believe it. Devil, you're a liar right. from the pits of hell. Right. I don't believe anything you got to say. I believe that is true because I believe what the Bible has to say. Do you speak that in your life? You see how strong that is, what I say? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. You're a new creature today. And if you're not a new creature, you can be. By accepting Jesus as being your Lord and Savior. What time y'all want to eat? Right now? Anybody else? Right now? Do you kind of get a little glimpse of what I'm talking about? Are you having a good time? Are you lost? Do you wish I'd shut up? I'm here today to show you this.
that I don't care how bad you've messed up. I don't care what you think you've done. I want up you. I told you some of my gory stuff, and I don't mind. I'll, it got, gets a whole lot worse than what I'm telling, and I don't like to tell it. I mean, I don't. It's not that I don't like to. It doesn't accomplish any purpose of reliving that mess. The thing that I want you to see is how Jesus restored my life. I said, God, either you heal me or kill me. Somebody's got to have some relief. And he just laughed. He said, I got more for you to do. As wild and ignorant as you got, and as stupid as you got, I'm going to show you that I can use you. I can use you. I don't possess any special talents and abilities that any of y'all don't have. Y'all got the same thing? The same Jesus lives in you that lives in me. Amen? Yes, Lord. I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Yes. Bill Mangum, I can drive more miles now in that truck than I ever could. I don't, yeah. We'll leave from down here at Madisonville. A load of hay or something going back. I'll be right out there the next morning, about 12, 13 hours. It's about 900 miles. I couldn't run 900 miles in 48 hours back then. And took a half a pound to do it. Yeah. That's okay, people. I want you to see where I was at. I'm no goody two-shoes. But I have a wonderful Lord and Jesus that lives inside of me, and that's who I serve now. I don't serve that devil no more. I use that truck and what we do to the glory of God. And I tell everybody that will sit there. It took me a year and a half to put that truck together. Oh, I'd get aggravated. Woo! Honey, why did I ever start this? She's like, I don't know either. For the amount of money you spent on it, you could buy a brand new one. And it's an 81 model. I said, boy, but don't it look good? And she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Three miles of the gallon, $5.30 a gallon. <laughs> Baby, look at that smoke come out them stacks. <laughs> she said, I know. It looks green to me. <laughs> Ain't it good? <laughs> That's how good Jesus is. But I use that truck to tell people about the Lord. I get in some places, golly, you can't back a gooseneck into. Somehow we make it. And then people are like, well. I said, I know. I didn't know if I could do it or not. But I said, Jesus helps me every time I go. And they're like, who? I said, Jesus rides with me and he helps me. I said, you see all that right there? I didn't have a, you know what to do in and throw out the window. And now he is just putting back and putting back. We got trucks, we got trailers, we got blades, we got more work we know what to do with. It just it just keeps coming in, and we keep throwing it back out there and throwing it back out there, and he just dumps it back in some more. And I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do with it. He said, I'll show you somebody. I'll show you somebody to help. Who are you helping today? Amen. Y'all ready to eat? Anybody want Jesus in their life? Anybody need Jesus in their life that does not have him before today? Anybody brave enough to try a little dab of what I got? Amen. If you don't have Jesus in your life and he's not your Lord and Savior today, I want you to come up here. You say in front of all them people. The Bible tells us if you don't acknowledge me before me, and I'm not going to acknowledge you before my Father. Put on, put it on, put him on, put him on, put him on. Are you willing to put it on today? Anybody, any takers? Come on up here, young man. Look here. You want Jesus in your life? Yes. You got to say, yes, sir. Why do you want Jesus in your life? I have no idea. You have no idea? <laughs> you just want him in there. That's okay. That's all it takes is you just know you want him in there. And you know what, Robert? Y'all got you one right here. Where's his mama? All right. Here's what I want you to tell your mom. Tell the mama. You get him. Y'all, y'all work with him, and he keeps persistent. And once you do it, you baptize him. You say he's too little. No, nah, he wanting it. We're going to baptize him. Amen. You know what you did? You just set the bar for all these other old people to get up and come forward now. You know why we want Jesus in our life? Amen. 
we want Jesus in our life because we're going to go to heaven and we're going to live forever with him and we're going to enjoy things and it's going to be great. And the Lord has a special plan for you in your life, I'll guarantee you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on, Danny. You stand right here. Stand right here. <laughs> Whoo! We've been many a mile. <laughs> All of them weren't right, but we're trying now with the help of the Lord. <laughs> That's right. We know that. Hey. Another young man. We've come close to dying. Pretty close. Both of us. Yeah. But we'll live forever. Do you want Jesus in your life? Sure do. 100%. Golly. <clears throat> this is good. And you say, oh, you just got caught and you just got pinned down. Yeah, we both got caught and we both got pinned down. But we up now and running, brother, and I don't know if y'all can keep up with us or not. <laughs> Probably so. No. <laughs> I'll dare any of them. I told Callie this morning, I said, I can still outrun you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell her how far I could outrun her. He wants Jesus in his life as Lord and Savior. How about that? Amen. Amen. Young man, what about you? You want Jesus in your life? Why do you want Jesus in your life? You just want him in there, huh? All right. Y'all do some educating and some young, and if these guys stay persistent about it, baptize them. Danny, you want to be baptized? I've been baptized. You've been baptized? Been bad since. <laughs> That's all right. If we will confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and He will forgive us all of our sins. All of them. That was part of my Easter story. He became our sin. He bore our sickness and our poverty so that we might become His righteousness. And His righteousness... Our righteousness is of Him. Amen? That's it. That's how we are. Hard to believe me and you're as righteous as Jesus, isn't it? Sure is. Woo! <laughs> and the church didn't even fall down. And lightning didn't strike. Bill Mangum, what about you? Come on. I've been sitting there and you've been looking at me and I've been looking at you. Kim? You guys stand right here. Wow. No, that's different. How you doing, John? Doing good. You come over here next to John. Lightning might not strike. Kim, come right here. Hey, Kim, how are you? Well, I'm good. Good now. Yeah. Bill, why do you want Jesus in your life? I want to be renewed. Amen. 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 Have you been baptized before? Yes, I have. You have. What about you? Yeah. Same way. Just rededicating y'all's life. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Do y'all come out here to church much, or do you have a church Not you much. go to, or just stay no. busy? Try to get into church. Oh, yeah. Start, start doing it, Bill. It, right. it, we're the kind of people, we got to stay busy doing something. You know that. We're yeah. either doing something or we're asleep. Amen. We sleep a lot more now. Amen. <laughs> but we're standing here today renewing our lives and rededicating our lives to serve the Lord. Amen. Woo! Tommy Parker, you know Tommy, oh, little Tommy. Yeah. Well, you know he preaches over a lot and all, and, and we. Tommy sends all of us uh, a text every morning at six o'clock. I get it, five o'clock down here. Right. And we stay involved and stay tight. We hold each other accountable. We get to our phone number and stay in there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Yeah, we run a lot of crazy miles. All these folks running wild for the devil. Amen. But we still got a lot of days, and we're going to run wild for the Lord right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm proud for y'all. Let's be renewed. Anybody else? Getting cheaper by the dozen. You young guys, y'all have a fresh life to start out. I want you to know that you can do all things through Christ that can strengthen you. When you're baptized and you accept Him into your heart, Jesus lives in you. Do you know what my granddaughter does sometimes? She was over there. She was doing this one day, little Harper back there. She was jumping up and down. We said, what are you doing? 
She said, Noni, I got Jesus in my heart. She was telling me. She said, that's good. She said, but what are you doing? She said, I'm shaking him up. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, let's have a word of prayer. Father God, I thank you and I thank you for this day. I thank you for these lives that have come before us all here wanting to rededicate their lives. Every one of them. And for these new guys, they're putting on Jesus for the first time. Father God, I pray and I pray and I pray that all these people will be surrounded by godly men and women that will walk with them and guide them and help them and teach them about Jesus and even teach us old people about Jesus. Come on. But Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for this church. We thank you for this family. And Father God, I pray a blessing over the food and the hands that are preparing it. Lord, we love you. Golly, it's good to be in your house. And it's just good to have you a part of us in all that we do, Father. Strengthen and guide us as we go. And it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. Robert, you got any instructions for these people? When the lady says it's ready, we'll eat. Folks, it's been a pleasure, and I enjoyed it. Hope y'all did. If you don't, come back, and I'll tell you another joke. Amen? All right.